So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and before we get started, if you guys can do me a favor, it takes one second, smash that like button because it really helps get this video out in front of more people's eyes and gets the channel a little bit more exposure to help it grow. But I do appreciate every like, every comment, every view of this channel. So thank you so much for all the support. But in this video, I did want to do a follow up on iPadOS 14.5 Beta 1. I want to talk about battery performance, how it's been for me the last couple days, and some other new features that have been exposed and uh, been able to find in the actual UI that are actual visual differences compared to 14.4. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's talk about some of the new features that I was able to find out when kind of going through all the UI. And one of the first things that I did see was if I go into the settings menu, go to software update, you now get this new screen that basically tells you A, that it's checking for an update. So you see that it's actually live checking for an update. And then it also tells you that the last time you checked it was today at 1241. And then once it's done checking, you can see that, hey, you're, you got a little check mark right there, like a physical one saying that you're on iPadOS 14.5 and then it's up to date. Before, we used to actually not get anything like that. I mean, we used to get a little thing that said, hey, you're on the latest update, but now it's a nice little check mark right there to let us know. Another new one that has to do with actually Siri, and the, ne the next few have to do with Siri. So the next one is that you can actually make an emergency call directly from the iPad, especially if you have data just by saying, you know, Siri's name to activate her or him, depending on which voiceover you use, and just saying call emergency. Once it does that, then it'll automatically send out that SOS and call 911 for you, or depending where you are, it'll call your emergency dispatcher. So that's a cool feature to have, especially on the iPhone side and on the iPad data side. And then there's also a new typing interface for Siri. So if you go into settings, you go all the way down to accessibility, and you keep going down and then you click on Siri here, then over here, it lets you decide if you want to type to Siri. So in order for this to actually work, you need to make sure that this little checkbox right here is turned on. So you have that type to Siri, which lets it basically go from voice dictation to text dictation. I think it's Apple's competition for interacting with the Google Home Assistant because you can actually text the Google Home Assistant too. So once you have that setting turned on, all you have to do is summon Siri by holding down that and then you get to start typing to Siri and it's a new little interface, which is always nice to have. So that's a nice little needed improvement. But for the most part, I keep my Siri turned off or at least I like to have it so it recognizes my voice and not my typing. Another one has to do with privacy, and the next few do have to do with privacy, and the first thing is that now that Apple is forcing applications to ask you if you're allowed to be tracked. So again, if you go into settings, you go into privacy, go to tracking, and then this is automatically turned off if you automatically default when Apple asks you. So if you, so if you tell Apple when that first prompt comes up and it says, hey, do you want us to let them track you? You can say no to all, and then this is, turned off by default. But if you say yes to a specific app and no to other ones, and this allows you to see a more in-depth look and toggle that off and on depending on the application. And then another privacy feature, you actually have to go into Safari in the settings. And if you go into Safari and scroll down, there's a new setting that is automatically toggled on for you right here called privacy preserving ad measurements. So I'm not 100% sure what the privacy preserving ad measurement really means, but it's there, it's automatically toggled on, and it's something that's new there. A couple of other things that I do want to reiterate for you. So you do have Series X and DualSense PS5 controller support now with iPadOS and iOS 14.5. And then another thing that was nice is if we go again just into any text box, you can now actually search for emojis, which is something that you couldn't do before. So there's a section to finally search for the type of emoji that you want that was not there on any iPadOS up until iPadOS 14.5. And then lastly, the one thing that I do want to cover is that we were now given the opportunity to unlock our iPhones with mask on when you're outside as long as you have an Apple Watch. But I tested it on the iPad Pro and I wore a mask and it did not work. So I believe that the unlocking with the mask on is purely for iOS because again, I had my Apple Watch and it would not prompt me at all if I wanted to unlock it with my Apple Watch like it does on an iPhone. So keep that in mind. But now I just want to do a quick showing of the battery and see how it's been doing. So if I go to battery up here, check out the battery percentage. You can see that we're doing six hours and 50 minutes of screen on time and on average around seven hours and 20 minutes right there. Now again, keep in mind, I do keep my thing plugged in. I keep my iPad plugged in pretty much at all times. And recently I've been doing it so the screen never turns off. Another way that I'm refusing to use best practices when it comes to batteries. But that is the battery percentage update or the battery update when it comes to this iPadOS 14.5. Hasn't really gotten any better, hasn't really gotten any worse. 
But that's pretty much it. So let's get out of this view and go back to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. As you guys saw, battery life hasn't seen much of an improvement or even a downtick. It's kind of stayed neutral for me. But again, I'm on an older iPad. I don't follow best practices to conserve battery life and battery longevity. I can't really say don't upgrade to 14.5 because of battery, because my battery life in general is just not that great anymore. But then we also saw some other differences in terms of privacy, adding a little bit more history to when you update your apps and things like that. So it's just basically Apple giving you more, right? Apple giving you just more tools and more insight to your device and what you're using it for. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike if you guys wanna stay protected. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.